And before we get into it, it will not work with a Rolo and your iPhone will not work with any of these printers. They are not wireless. They're all going to be using a USB connection. How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we're going to do a tutorial. We're gonna set it up on Android, Mac, Windows, and Google Chromebook. Specifically this printer, OS Tech OT425A, but it should also work with an MF label printer or an X printer with the same instructions that we're gonna go over. I will put an index in the description that you can go look at to see exactly like what system you're trying to install. Then you can skip forward to that, but I do encourage you to watch the setup process. If you didn't already see the unboxing video from yesterday that I'll put a link to in the corner right there, where we go over calibration and uh, initial setup of the printer. Um, the compatibilities of these printers go beyond what they even advertise on Amazon. They always go on sale on Amazon, so I've been posting on Instagram when they do go on sale, and the prices are like 75 bucks when they're on sale. Normally they're like 150, and if you're gonna be looking at something a little bit more expensive, like a Rolo, that's $200, and it doesn't even have the Chromebook or the Android compatibilities. Uh, we're not gonna go over Linux, because Linux people usually are a lot smarter than me, so you'll figure it out if you're a Linux user. With all of that being said, if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing, and let's get into setup calibration and then into Android printing. So here is our printer and if your printer came with an install CD or USB drives throw those away because they're pretty trash when it comes to installing the printer correctly. You're better off following the steps in this video and as I mentioned earlier these steps will work with any of these printers. All the installation instructions you're about to see do overlap with a lot of printers. So if you don't have one of these specific three, maybe try it anyways. It, and before we get into it, it will not work with a Rolo and your iPhone will not work with any of these printers. They are not wireless. They're all going to be using a USB connection. Another thing to mention about these types of printer is they do take non-proprietary labels. You can use any thermal labels that you get off of Amazon or that you have at your house. If you have a giant roll like this that was from UPS.com that you ordered, you can suspend it behind the printer, feed it through this little back slot, and either get a roll holder or a box with a chopstick to suspend that roll and to use it through your printer. I don't have a video on how to order these, but I do have a blog post that I will link in the description that has a section talking about getting free UPS or FedEx labels. Make sure to check that out and try to order some and see if you could get some because this right here lowers a lot of the costs of this. Now we're gonna get into the actual printer setup calibration. You're gonna need to take your power supply, you're gonna need to take your power cord, plug those together, and take whatever power end of your power cord and plug that into the wall. Then you're gonna take this end and put it into the printer. Then you can switch your printer on and you should get some sort of light indicators on the front. You will get some beeps if you press this, this front feed button. And now we're gonna load some labels into the printer. You're gonna take the lifters, you're gonna press those in, lift the printer up. And if you have a roll of labels, you're going to skewer it and then put these little ends on. Drop that in here. You're gonna wanna make sure it's in the center as much as possible. And then you're going to, then you're gonna feed it through these label holders. You don't wanna make them too tight. You wanna make it loose enough for it to freely flow, but tight enough for them to guide them through the printer. And that's how you set up a roll of labels. The printing part is on top because that's gonna be what makes contact with the thermal print head and creates the image, text, or barcode. Now, if you were to just feed it through the back, like I told you, if you had a long, a long roll, you would adjust these accordingly, equidistant on each side, feed it through the middle, feed it through right here, and then you would just close the top like that. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you press the front button, one full label, feeds out and if it for some reason doesn't or it makes an error, you're gonna wanna hold this front button down, 
for a couple seconds. It'll start blinking red and then it will, this is the uh, calibrations process where the printer is reading in between labels and spitting some out. And then once it calibrates, you can open it up, roll them back on so they don't get wasted. Now that you know how to set up, load labels, and calibrate your printer, we're gonna plug in the USB cord because that is the only way to communicate with this printer is via USB. And we're going to get into the different installations. So using this printer on Android devices is something that they don't really talk about, that the companies don't even know that is possible. It's something that I had figured out earlier this year, and I think it's a great feature if you were running off of your phone because you can print any label that you can pull up on your phone onto your printer. It's a pretty cool feature using your phone as a computer because that's what this really is. And in order to do this, you, you are going to need that USB cable and a USB to USB-C converter, something like this or a dongle like this. This specific printer came with this converter, but you also could purchase one of these off of Amazon. They're not that expensive and I will put a link to it in the description. Take that USB cable, plug it into the dongle, and then you're going to plug it into your phone. If anything pops up, just get out of the screen, go to the Google Play Store, and you're gonna wanna download this app called NoCo Print. That is what it looks like. You're going to hit install. They have a free version and a paid version. The free version has a bunch of ads that are really annoying. The paid version is like 10 bucks, but gets rid of all those ads. I encourage the paid version, although I have the free version, I just get really annoyed of the ads. I'm gonna hit open. Once it's installed, uh, we're gonna go down here to printer. We're gonna navigate over to the USB icon, hit this checkbox and then hit okay. And as you can see, it pops up with a printer being connected. It thinks this is called the MF label DT425A, which could be very well what this printer actually is. We're gonna click on that. We're gonna hit select manually, scroll down to Zebra, go to ZP, ZP450, because these do use these Zebra programming languages. Hit OK, we get hit with an ad, hit X. Now our printer is ready to go. I'm gonna download a sample label, fulfilledmerchant.com. I will put a link to this in the description, and I have a blog post with a sample label right there. I'm gonna hit download, download that sample label, and it's already formatted in four by six. I'm gonna hit three dots at the top, hit print. Paper size is four by six. I'm gonna hit uh, the drop down to pick my printer. We're gonna pick the MF label NOCO print. Everything looks good. I'm gonna hit print. And then it says print job created. I'm gonna tap that. It brings it into NOCO print. I'm gonna hit print. And now it's gonna send the signal to the printer. And just like that, we have printed our first label on an Android phone. It will also work with Android tablets. And if you guys haven't already, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell. It says it right on the label. Whatever platform you're trying to generate the label from, you're gonna have to change that platform to four by six. I do have a video for that. I will put that in the description. That is a video you need to watch if you have no idea. If you're just new to thermal printing, you need to watch that video because it kind of shows you how you change the settings in each platform and then whatever platform you're in, you're gonna have to find those settings. So that video is very helpful. So that will be in the description. Make sure to check that out. And now we're going to go install this on a Mac. All you Mac users, you are going to love me. So we're gonna set this now up on Mac. You're gonna take your USB cord. If you have a Mac with a normal USB port, you're just gonna plug that in. And if you have a newer Mac, you're going to use the converter. I will put a link to this in the description. Or if your printer came with a converter, like this printer actually did, and you're gonna plug that into the side of your computer or the back if it's an iMac, you're gonna plug it in. Now we're gonna go inside the computer. All right, in the video description, you're going to go to where it says link to the Mac driver and you're going to click on that Google Drive link. That's going to bring you here. Then you're going to go up here to this little download arrow and hit download. It's going to say it's a big file and they can't scan it for viruses. Would you still like to download it? You're gonna hit download anyways. And that's going to 
and then it's going to start a download down here. It's 300 megabytes or 330 megabytes, so it might take a while for it to download. Once it does download, you're going to click on it. It's going to open up your downloads folder or wherever it downloaded to with this folder called ITPP941 driver CD7. You're going to double click on that, navigate to Mac, click on that, and then where it says label printer driver version 1.1.dmg, going to double click on that. It's going to open it. Uh, and then this opens over here, this label printer PKG, you're going to double click on and it's going to pop up saying label printer PKG is not from an uh, it's it's from an unidentified developer. You can't open it. That's what Apple likes to do is they like to control what goes in and out of your computer through the App Store. But if you go down here to system preferences, go to security and privacy, go to general down here it says label printer PKG was blocked because it's not from an identified developer. You can open it anyways. That's what you have to do. Now, if you hit open anyways, it should allow you to run the driver. So now that we have the driver open, you're going to hit continue. It's gonna take up 50 kilobytes of space. You're gonna hit install. You gotta type in your password or use your fingerprint and the installation was successful. We're gonna hit close, move to trash. We can now close this, we can close that. And now you're gonna go up to the little magnifying glass, type in printers and scanners. You're going to hit the plus sign right here and it should come up with MF label something or the name of your printer if you're using another printer. Click on that and then down here where it says use choose a driver you're going to go to select software and type in label printer all one word space label printer or if you type in label printer two words a bunch of them might pop up and then you just have to pick the one that's called label printer label printer so that's the the driver you need to use and then hit ok and then you're going to hit add it's going to install the printer it's pretty quick uh, now the best thing to do is to get a test label. Head over to fulfilledmerchant.com. I will have a link to this in the description. Grab a test label from the website right here. We're gonna hit download, and then it brings up. It'll bring up this uh, this sample label. I'm gonna hit Command P, or you can go to File Print. And I'm also in Google Chrome. You want to make sure you're in Google Chrome browser. Otherwise, things might be slightly different in your print dialog. And what I mean by print dialog is right here. Uh, you're going to want to make sure your destination is chosen MF label or MF label DT425A or whatever printer you're trying to print to. Paper size 4x6, everything looks good. Scale, uh, you can fit to paper, fit to printable area, and then you can hit print. That sends a signal to the printer and it prints a beautiful sample label. It's so beautiful. If you haven't already liked the video, and subscribed and clicked the bell, now's a good time to do so. I'm gonna show you one more thing on Mac. If you need to make your labels darker, you can print using system dialog. You can go here to printer features on the drop down, and then you can go to darkness. You can turn it up a little bit from six to like eight, and that will turn the darkness up and then if you go to last use settings, it will save that darkness setting every time you print. So that's something you might wanna do. A lot of people don't know how to change the darkness setting. That's how you do it. You can also change your paper size. You always wanna make sure it's four by six if that's what you're trying to print or whatever dimension that you're trying to print in that label. Ever platform you're printing from, you need to go into that platform and change it to four by six because it normally generates an eight and a half by 11. I do have a video on that. The link is in the description. It's called watch this video before anything else. You need to watch that video before you start printing stuff. It can be frustrating without that video. So um, thank you guys for watching. And now we're going to get into a Windows computer. So here we are on a Windows computer. We're not going to plug the USB in until later on after we download the driver and run it because sometimes Windows will recognize that there's a printer installed and it will try to auto install it with a different driver and that can come sometimes mess it up if it picks the wrong driver. From my experience, waiting until you are running the driver and it asks for you to plug it in can give you a better result 
than just plugging it in right now. Unless it's a plug and play printer, which most of these are not. But anyways, we're gonna go on the computer and get this thing installed. Uh, check the link in the description to this MF label bartender driver and you're going to hit download or it'll just automatically start downloading as it is down here. It's a 41.2 megabyte file right now. And once it's done downloading, you are going to click on it, accept, next, next, finish. And then this little shield down here is blinking. I'm gonna click on that. And it's gonna ask me if it wants me to allow this app to make changes to my device. I'm gonna hit yes. Uh, install printer drivers, hit next. This printer is going to be attached by USB, yes. And now I'm going to plug the printer in. And it did recognize it as the MF label DT425A. And I'm going to hit next and hit finish. I'm gonna hit close. And that pretty much installed the printer. Um, down here you type in printers and scanners, click there. And you, as we can see the MF label DT425A is right there. You hit manage, you can throw a test print at the, printer just to see if it has communication and the communication worked perfectly fine. Uh, I want to show you guys how to change some preferences if you need to. It's just good to to know where to go to change some settings if you have to. Printing preferences right here. Go to page setup. You want to make sure it's 4 by 6 or whatever dimension of label you're going to be printing. It already defaulted to four by six, which is great. Over in graphics, you wanna make sure that it's on dithering none. That looks perfect. Stock, you're not gonna mess with, but options, if you uncheck this box right here, you can turn darkness up a little bit. You can turn print speed down a little bit or just leave it checked to leave the current settings. But if you do need to turn darkness up slightly, you can do that here in the settings and then hit okay. Uh, we are going to print a test label over at fulfilledmerchant.com. This is a, a test 4x6 shipping label. Make sure that everything prints smoothly. So you're going to go to this post. The link to this label is in the description. Hit download, and then you can hit control P or file print, and it will pop up with the MF label. Hit make sure your destination is MF label DT425A, paper size, User is 4x6 or 4x6, uh, and that's fine. And then we're going to hit, then we're going to hit print. It's going to send the label to the printer. And there we are a beautiful sample label printed. And if you haven't already liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel or click the bell, you can do so now. Make sure that you go into your settings in your specific platform that you're using and change those to four by six, such as eBay or Poshmark or Etsy. And I do have a video on that. I'll put in the description. Make sure you watch that because if you don't change that, then your printer isn't going to be printing correctly. and It's just going to frustrate you. So I do encourage you to watch that video, but thank you for watching windows. Now we're going to get into a Google Chromebook. All right, Chromebook people. You are going to love me because other printers are compatible with the Chromebook, not just the Zebra LP2844, but it's the same process as installation. You're going to plug your printer in via USB or USB-C with a converter, and then you're going to navigate to the description of this video, which will navigate you to fulfilledmerchant.com where you need to grab this PPD file from this Google Chrome post, Zebra LP2844 post right here. Excuse the screen flickering, that's just how it picks up on camera. You're gonna download the PPD. We need to download it. So now we have it in our folder. Then you're going to go to settings, which is like down here in this little gear. We're gonna type in printers. add printer and unknown printer is what I have plugged in. That is the barcode thermal printer. We're going to hit add and then you can type in whatever you want here, manufacturer 
It's like an MF label printer. You can call it whatever you want. And then that PPD file, you're gonna br hit browse. You're gonna have to find that PPD file, click on it and then hit open and then hit add and it will add the printer. Now we're gonna have to get a sample label. I do have a sample label that I will link to in the description. I'm gonna hit download and then there's your sample label. You can hit the printer icon right here and then it's gonna hit unknown printer, more settings. And um, this is where this is kind of confusing. Um, when I was using when I was using the zebra printer, it said that it was uh, it had I think some sort of index or four by six here, but here it's a lot of letters and numbers, and I noticed that you kind of have to do a test print on on or click on them to see which ones kind of look like they're right, and then if it's not, you can change. You can I'm arrowing through them to kind of see which ones look right and which ones don't. Uh, and I found that this one right here, the OE W two eight eight H four three two, looks fine. Um, you can hit fit to page, and then we're gonna hit print, and it's gonna send the signal to the printer and print a barcode just like that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't understand how to mess with darkness settings on Chromebook. It just, I've been able to get it to print, but I don't know how to adjust darkness settings or dithering. The label will scan, it is readable, and it's more than what we thought was possible with Chromebook, with this process, with this method. You will have to go into your own settings in your platform and make sure that you change those settings to four by six in order for the label to be generated correctly. And I do have a video of that in the description going through like eBay, Etsy, PayPal, Poshmark, and it's showing through step-by-step step like how to change it to four by six. And you must do that before printing those labels and generating them. But the sample label will give you a good idea of if you have the printer set up correctly. Uh, that's pretty much it. I, I do appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about the thermal printer at all, throw them in the comment section. I'll try my best to get back to you and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.